of you who might follow me on Facebook, you know, I always start my speech with, hey y'all. So hey y'all. <laughs> so my name is Sandra Witten. I'm running for Congressional District 28. It's about 300 miles from here. Um, what's important is that you know that I'm fighting two machines. I'm either going to be fighting a 16 year incumbent who's been a Democrat, who's considered a moderate, who like to call him a lapdog, or I'm fighting the only socialist in the state of Texas who's been endorsed by Elizabeth Warren, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, Ileana Omar, all of those fun and friendly faces that we know and love from CNN. In fact, they're already bringing their Antifa rhetoric to Laredo, which is something that in the 11 years that I've been there has never happened. Monday, it took Martin Luther King Jr. Day, they sent out a flyer to all of our United ISD schools and they said, please help us promote a hashtag no border wall day. Your kids will get graduation credit hours. Here's where it gets worse. UISD students are, letter, are federal law enforcement family students, predominantly. My kids saw that flyer. My kids are Border Patrol family. My husband's been a Border Patrol agent for 11 years. I live a quarter of a mile from the river. When you hear on the news that there is no problem, I can tell you every single day that there is a problem on our border. I have a video on my Facebook page from my front porch that you can hear the live gunfire from January 2nd when we had a week long war in the Wave of Laredo. I can tell you story after story about my kids' baseball and football games and practices, how we've watched illegal aliens run through our practices carrying drugs, smuggling human beings. The IH-35 corridor is the number one trafficked area for human and drug smuggling in the United States. Guess where it comes? Right here to Houston. It is so vital that we eliminate the problem that we have on our borders because we have a democratically ran and controlled border. I actually have a democratic mafia in my district, which is exactly why I'm here in Houston. My incumbent has been there for 16 years. His brother is the sheriff and his sister's the tax collector and she's running for a judgeship. If that doesn't sound like a monarchy or a, or a mafia to you, I don't know what does. Because the problem that we face in my district is retaliation. I speak to hundreds of people a week and they tell me, I believe in your values. I want you to win, but I am so afraid of donating to your campaign because we might lose our business. We might get kicked out of our home or our family might disown us. So they're afraid to contribute financially to what they truly believe in. People see the need for a border wall. They see the need to protect their second amendment rights because I'm originally from Southeast Virginia and I'm telling you what happened in Virginia is exactly what's happening in the state of Texas. Look at Houston, look at Austin, look at Dallas, look at San Antonio. The liberals have come in and they've started spreading their cancerous virus across our beautiful red state of Texas. I live in a D plus nine district. Three years ago, you never saw a Trump hat, you never saw a flag, you never saw a bumper sticker. I see it every single day. The conservative message is moving, but I need y'all's help. Because of districts like up here in Houston, you strong conservatives, I need your voice to help carry mine throughout the district that I represent, that I look forward to representing. I need your financial contributions. I need you to be sharing because I guarantee that out of this room, at least one of you knows somebody in my nine counties. And it will take every single one of us to flip District 28. But when we flip District 28, we will continue to keep the rest of the state of Texas red, which is so vital for 2020. Our president needs your support in District 28. Our president needs your support in El Paso. Our president needs your support in all of our border counties and border districts because without it, without the representation that we will bring to the House so that we can keep this charade of our impeachment process out of the headlines and get back to the things that the president has done for our country, what he has done for the state of Texas, what he has done for our oil fielders, our border patrol, 
our farmers, our trucking industry. I bet most of you don't know that over the summer, Laredo, Texas was listed as the number one port in the entire country beating Los Angeles. $303 billion a year go through the Port of Laredo, and I have a two-lane road that go in and out of the Port of Laredo. If that doesn't sound like failed leadership to you, I don't know what does. That is the leadership that we have currently in District 28. That's why it's taking a housewife, a mother of four, to fight for the freedoms, not just for District 28, but for the state of Texas because we have the opportunity, like what was said with Lacey, to gain seats in the House. We will need our state representatives there who can fight for us so that when we have those four extra seats that we are going to gain in Congress, that we can fill them and make them red. But it's gonna take conservatives like Lacey Hall. It's gonna take conservatives like Frank Pomeroy, who's running in Senate District 21, like Pete Flores, who took a seat that had been a Democratic stronghold for 139 years and flipped it. South Texas in the Valley is hungry for a conservative voice and they've never had it. And now I'm pledging to the rest of the state that I am that voice, but I need your support. Show South Texas that you guys care about them because they think the rest of the state hates them. And I tell everyone, Texas is one big neighborhood. We are a big family, and we are. And I am proud to be part of this Texas family. So again, my name is Sandra Witten. I am running for Congressional District 28. You can find me at SandraForTexas.com. You can follow me on Facebook at SandraForTexas. And I thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Eric, for allowing me to speak.